another Drake video. This time we got the addiction that destroyed Drake's career. Now, what can that addiction be? Is it the minors? Is it drugs? We don't know, but let's find out. This is by Hip Hop Madness. Check them out, they probably serve up good quality content. I think that people have been making fun of him for such a long time that he has really internalized all that. And that dictates the way he probably moves behind the scenes. I'm your girl, and your girl, and your girl, because right, you right, treated right, me right. like this. You think I wasn't cool enough. He's been holding a lot close to the chest. A lot of in the industry do not try to everybody. That yeah. is not true. I, you introduce uh, him to your girl, extra friendly, smiling. He do that. Exchanging 19, numbers. 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70 times. And it ain't just rappers. Man, always yelling, the athletes, the actors, the golfers, the executives, the tech people. What is the real issue with you and marriage? Now Which? I got to dig in and see, what's your family like? Oh, your dad left you at five. Oh, I get that. He never walked you to the bus stop. You're mad about this. Since the beginning of his career, Drake's relationship with women has always been at the forefront of his music. Whether his songs were about going through a breakup, occasionally depicting himself as sensitive, or outright portraying himself as a simp, Drake to seemed to genuinely stop. admire women. But over time, things You're drastically changed, until the point he morphed into the self-proclaimed certified lover boy. From venting his feelings of loneliness to an ex on Marvin's room, through to accusations of rampant misogyny on the 21 Savage assisted her loss, even Drizzy's claim that the only woman he loves is his mom on God's plan was a drastic departure from when he was actively trying to settle down. But where the yeah. good guy image was once intact and helped skyrocket his career to the top, that's long gone now and replaced with the perception that, as Kendrick said, Drizzy doesn't even like women. In fact, he only values them when it comes to sexual gratification and as a way to have a one-up on his enemies and friends. In short, there's now a belief that Drake has a serious sex addiction, which has basically created the predicament he finds himself in today. He presents himself as like this smart, composed, thoughtful businessman. But if you're your friend's girls, you're not them for them, by the way. There's tons of bad You're not yeah. just doing it to get a nut. You're your man. That's what you're doing. It sounds crazy, but that's what it's about. I'm going to do something that I know that I'm going to have over you. Oh, forever. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Currently, I. Hey, man. All I can say is, dude is not my, like, favorite comedian, bro. But he, he's spitting facts, bro, right? Like, it's like, come on, bro. Like, he got the choice of anybody in the world, bro. But he fucking on his man's girl, bro. It's, it's wild, bro. It's like, why why is he doing that? He don't even need to do, do anybody like that. It makes no sense. And don't look at me. I, I I can't name someone off the top of my head for uh who he's who's done that to. I'm pretty sure he did it to the weekend or somebody like that. But I know he does it quite often to a lot of his friends, but I can't name Operating him. in a state that I'm may fill a friend. void inside him while deviating from the image that first made him successful, Drake has made it clear that he's not a one-woman man at this point in his life, nor does he plan to change that. And while that makes him no different from many other superstars, the problem for the Six God is that there's a feeling of spite and self-sabotage to how he goes about it that has nearly destroyed his career several times over. So let's break down the roots of this addiction and how it's been hiding in plain sight for a long time now. When you pattern yourself as a ladies' man, it's really no surprise that you might ruffle some feathers or act impulsively when things don't go your way. Just look at what happened in the aftermath of Drake flying a fresh-faced Ice Spice out to OVO spice. Fest, only to suddenly cut ties with her when it appeared he didn't get what he wanted out of it. It's been speculated that Drake unfollowed you afterwards. Well, we, we don't know that. Do you want to tell us some tea really on that? He did. I don't know why, though. Shame on you, Drake. Shame on you. You shouldn't have done that. Happy to go someone in an instant, Drake's objectives with up-and-comers like Ice come into focus when you see how much he prides himself on being a bachelor. So, when he doesn't get his way, his superstardom allows him to move in a way without any consequences. And this behavior was further highlighted in an interview with Angie Martinez, where track. French Montana basically lifted the lid on how Drake operates. Yes. There's people with more reputation than me. Drake is close, but you and Drake are friends. Splash bros. Snipe squad. You know, he gave me the snipe squad thing. 10 rules, 10 snipe commandments. Thou shall not snipe a bro's ting. Thou shall never pillow talk or discuss business with a ting. On any import from the United States, Canada, or any other region, thou shalt practice a maximum three day export rule to avoid frustration. You fly anybody in, give them three days so you can avoid frustration. Three days maximum. With Drake basically retaining the mindset of a man in his 20s, it explains why Drizzy also doesn't care whose toes he steps on, including sniping someone else's toes. Take for instance the story of Naomi Cher. Unlike Ice Spice, it's believed that she welcomed Drake's advances despite being in an eight-year relationship. To make matters worse, Drake had worked out with her then-boyfriend just days before, only to later post an IG picture after the story broke captioned, without remorse, dirty. Imagine having the most beautiful, supportive, and faithful relationship eight years long with an engagement and wedding plan, her former fiancé, Jamie Sun, said. Then this major opportunity comes and a world star calls your fiancé to sign a record deal, flies you both over, and then, out of nowhere, all the trust has vanished with knives in your back and in your heart. 
I am no longer with the person people 42. think I am together with. I am no longer with the eight years I thought I was together with. Let's with someone eight. like Jamie participating in the music industry at a lower level, Drake clearly had no concerns when it came to trampling over his life to get what he wanted. But even though he got away with just a bit of reputational damage that time, recently, it's become clear that Drake's promise to French Montana about never getting involved with someone I'm else's not, girl was like just talk. Because though, when you right look now, back, Drake has a habit of bringing sure. women into almost all of his beefs with other rappers. And in the view of one of his biggest supporters and academics, I mean, that, this that is where Drake has been an habitual line crosser. I keep asking people and they're like, yo, listen, man, Drake's a little sloppy with it. All these guys, they share the same crop of girls. It's a thin line between like, yo, these are like the community chicks that we all and yo, you're doing certain to kind of like disrespect. In Axe View, this has always been a key part of how Drake has operated, long before it led Future to call him a fan on We Don't Trust You. Case in point, just look at why his decade-long feud with CB started. Imagine how Prison bold Reed. Drake was when Drake sends a bottle over there with a note that says, I'm the love of your life. That was supposedly Whoa, the note. So and right then, beef starts. So Drake is in a club, supposedly with Meek and some other people, and Chris Brown is there, and Drake sends a, a, a thing over to be like, I'm the love of your life. Drake of is a sad man. Yeah, really? You gotta keep the girl away from Drake. Back when Drake and Chris had some bad blood over Rihanna, the whole thing likely made things nah, awkward at parties, a, but didn't really spill out onto before. record or really even enter the public consciousness at the time. But that hasn't always been the case. And much like his dispute over Princess Diana with Future, it was his decision to mess with people's girls that led his ghostwriting scandal with Quentin Miller to come to light in the first place. In turn, creating a narrative that's haunted him ever since. That's, that's how the whole thing started with even the, the reference tracks. DJ Drama says, bro, he didn't write that. The guy in my studio here, in Atlanta, he recorded it and Drake just sang it over. That's how that starts. So two guys who thought Drake their chicks he basically created that moment. But while all of these incidents could have been damaging to his career, if you need to look at how far Drake will push it when it comes to women, look no further than him betraying his very own mentor when he was at his lowest. A story that was brought to light in a bar by Kendrick Lamar's Not Like Us, the allegations that Drake on Wayne's girl when he was in jail have actually been around for a while. And to Weezy's credit, he's done his best to shoot Drake some bail. Oh, I wasn't worried about that. That's just how life go when you locked up. She still be texting me and stuff, you know? However, this is only one side of the real story that never gets reported, because as Wheezy disclosed in his autobiography, this actually took a real toll on him. As a man, he wrote, I woke up still feeling messed up about the f***ed up day that I had. Hell is what it was. I'm used to arguing with my girl on a daily basis, but finding out that she'd messed with Drake was the absolute worst thing I could have found out. Really. Seemingly happy to backstab one of the people who had done the most for his career, this would point to the sheer depths of Drake's issues when it comes to his addiction. But as for how Drake's addiction manifested in the first place, there's a couple of theories, but both boil down to the same thing. It's his way of getting back at the tough times in his youth or proving everyone wrong who doubted that a suburban Jewish kid from Toronto could make it big in hip hop. And during an in-depth conversation on the Joe Budden podcast, they weighed in on how people's perceptions of him influenced his tendency to forget his loyalties and go after women who should be off limits. Let's have a real conversation about how to talk about Drake behind the scenes and how people in the industry talk about Drake and how they view him. View Drake like he's a corny who grew he up not getting sometimes. no mm -hmm. and now he got money and now he's able to afford that, right? <laughs> Left with a deficit he's now trying to make up for, this explains some of the recklessness in how Drake pursues time, women. Bro. Because for him, it's personal and a way to further assert his place at the top. Bottom line is, most of these in the industry that have grown up a certain way don't like that this moves in a fashion he moved because they never had a respect for him. You just said that a lot of in the industry do that. A lot of in the industry do not try to everybody's that yeah. is not true. You introduce uh, him to your girl, extra friendly, smiling. He do that. Exchanging 19, numbers. 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70 times. And it ain't just rappers. The athletes, the actors, the golfers, the executives, the tech people. The difference is you might be more comfortable being way more vocal about that that you never respected than the know. other while Joe Budden thinks that this is all about how he's been treated in the game and is now trying to get back, others feel it goes deeper than just rap. According to Nadeska and Ebro, it, it goes is. back to how he's been treated by the world as a whole, not just the industry. Because when the world has looked down on him or made him a figure of sad boy memes, being the guy who could steal your girl in a moment's notice is his way of proving himself as the star he always saw himself as. I think that people have been making fun of him for such a long time that he has really internalized all that and that dictates the way he probably moves behind the scenes. 
I'm like, you're a girl, that he you're a girl, that, uh, and you're a girl because that, you treated right. me like this. You think I wasn't cool enough. He's been holding a lot close to the chest. Due to social media and people listing all of the people, it was like a list of 40 people that Drake either has problems or has had problems with. Right. The women, the men, the women have yeah, decided to be with. At a certain point, you start going, wait, it can't be everybody else, bro. But above all, it's not just Drake's obvious over-reliance on sex that's the issue, nor even his ruthless backstabbing of his enemies. The real problem is how his behavior and personal circumstances have shaped a negative attitude towards women that threatens to be his downfall. Because from Pusha T to Kendrick Lamar, every time that he's been forced to take an L in a battle is when he comes at someone's spouse or fiance. And in Pusha's view, this goes all the way back to the trials and tribulations of his youth. Now I gotta dig deeper. What is the real issue with you and marriage? Now I gotta dig in and see, what's your family like? Oh, your dad left you at five. Oh, I get that. He never walked you to the bus stop. You're mad about this. <laughs> left Man, without a strong role stop. model and instead given a father who's still chasing girls himself to this time. day in a slightly creepy way, it explains why Drake thinks nothing of getting involved with someone else's girl, nor discrediting someone else's wife. While for someone like Pusha, Kendrick, or even ASAP Rocky, who adopted the Drizzy Beef after lines about his wife from For All the Dogs, this wouldn't be an option. In turn, creating the sense that Drake may have plenty of relationships with women, but doesn't ultimately respect them. Left embarrassed by his own actions and with his peers now calling him out, Drake's gotten a serious wake-up call to change his ways. Because if he doesn't, this addiction might destroy his career, his legacy, and maybe even his life. Damn, not his life. You know we do whatever. I didn't even think it was going to be that kind of addiction, but...